now we're going to talk a little bit about patient access um, and how patients can access the program here in Arkansas. Um, in a minute, I'm going to bring up uh, Jerry Prier. He is a pharmacist here in Arkansas. We're going to talk a little bit about the safety profile of cannabis, but uh, I think what most people came for is how do I become a patient. So um, I'm just going to tell you, I just recently became a patient uh, here in Arkansas. Uh, July 4th, I went. I, I took all of my medical records, all of my pharmaceutical history, uh, to a doctor, a licensed Arkansas physician, and she performed a complete evaluation with me. Um, it was very simple. These these certificates are really the the most easiest way to access the program, a medical cannabis program from any state that I've seen. Um, all the doctor has to do is certify that you have a qualifying condition. That's it. We have the forms outside that the doctors have to fill out. And if you can't find a doctor, uh, like Storm said, on the Arkansas Cannabis Industry Association website, there's a, a doctor locator. And we're also going to be holding more events like this throughout the state. Um, we have one in Fort Smith, Arkansas on July 29th. There will actually be a doctor on site. Um, Dr. Tammy, she has a booth out here. She'll be on site at that at that. Symposium certifying patients uh, in person. So if you know anyone in the Fort Smith area, we'll also be uh, putting on our Facebook page um, different events that will be coming up. Um, that's basically how easy it is. You just take that certification to your doctor. If they won't do it, then go look for a doctor who will. Um, Jerry, if you want to come up here real quick. Everyone, Jerry Prier. about the uh, safety profile of uh, cannabis, cannabis medicine. Um, but it's a pretty easy thing to uh, talk about because uh, there's not much there as far as unsafeness, as everyone knows. Um, there are a few things um, that are worthwhile for mentioning, much like any medicine. Um, when you start, you start low and you go slow, especially if you're sick, frail, or elderly. Um, it's important to know a few interactions that it might have. Uh, the biggest one, the most common one, would probably be warfarin. And there might be any number of people in the audience who are taking warfarin. Um, it has a potential interaction, enough interaction that uh, certainly you could tell your doctor, and it might be worthwhile to draw an IR about after about a month of taking it. Um, past that, it, um, it inhibits the, um, the metabolism of warfarin, and so there's a chance for your, for your INR to get too high. And it, it is not a, by any means so strong or so, um, um, it, it's not, what I'm trying to say is it's not, a, it's not a sure bet that it will, you know, raise your INR, but it might, and it's, it's worth enough to draw a level. Um, past that, there are only a handful of fairly rare and powerful drugs that, um, that need to, uh, that, you know, you really need to, to address with your physician. But like any drug, um, the important thing is, is that you always tell your physician what you're taking and when. Um, you always tell any other doctor that you're taking, especially if you're going for surgery, so, so that the anesthesiologist can know what to expect. It can affect some anesthesia. Um, and basically, you have understanding of what you're taking and what it could affect, so that if you do have something weird going on, you have some kind of idea about what it might be coming from. Um, and so those are very simple things, much like you would take any medicine. It's important for you to tell your doctor about what you're taking and why. Um, and I don't expect there will be uh, much in the way of interactions in the populace in Arkansas, other than the warfarin, which many people take. Okay, what about heparin, too? It does not affect heparin, as far as I'm aware. Yes? Is there a list somewhere on some site that tells the list of Oh yes, oh yes, and um, I've worked up a list for um, for the National State Healthcare to um, to be able to access and work off of, um, and then they can, you know go from there if you if you are taking one so that you know if there are issues you recognize them. Also, it's important. One second, is it on your question? So the Arkansas Legislature and the, the way the law is set up is a, a licensed pharmacist has to write standard operating procedures, certain standard operating procedures for the dispensaries or the cultivation centers. One of those standard operating procedures is drug interactions. 
So each dispensary, each cultivation center should understand drug interactions. And they're act when you become a, a member of their dispensary, they should give you that list as well. So just check with your dispensary when you go in. Would your card also show if you get like a like No, because the, the state doesn't doesn't look at the pharmaceutical codes that you're on. You also can't uh, assume that your doctor's going to yeah. Right, so that will be done at the dispensary level. When you go in, they should check your pharmaceuticals before even accepting you as a member. 